I don't know. Do this. So I'm getting 20 frames per second. That's not good. Not great. Not terrible. Now we're at 40. <laughs> so, maybe if I just pick this up a little bit higher. You can stream to Facebook, let's see on there. Facebook, YouTube. What else do they have? Twitch. Twitch. Uh, yeah, the, the Facebook link is YouTube. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere between 20 and 30. 20 is not great. 36 is good. Um, is there any way I could wear, like, wear an earbud so I can hear myself?
Good morning and welcome to the start line of the 2025 Electric Formula Sun Grand Prix. My name is Jonathan Mullen. I am here on the ASC staff and I'm here with a representative from our title sponsor, Electric. Hi, I'm Aaron. I'm director of social media at Electric and um, it's a pleasure to join you, Jonathan. Yeah, it's great to have you and Electric here on site. As you can see on screen, we have the solar cars lined up here for the ceremonial start of the Electric Formula Sun Grand Prix. We have 10 teams cleared for the start line this morning. You can see the starting grid on screen now. And starting in pole position, well, number one is team from Poly Montreal, number 55. That they are in our multi occupant vehicle class. In the number two position is car number 79 from Florida Poly. They are in our single occupant class. In position number three, we have number 49, Georgia Tech. They are also position nine. We have car number and teams out on the track right now. This is actually a record year for Formula Sun Grant later on later on today once they pass uh, screw today once they pass uh, scrutineering along with Garrett at and once again I'm Aaron Wachulis joining with Electric we are going to send you over to our drone footage uh, with our videographer Sonny uh, as we complete their first lap So for those watching at home, Jonathan, can you tell us a little about the event and the rules and stuff like that? Yeah, um, so the solar cars will be on the track for eight hours a day for the next three days. So today from 10 to 6 and 9 to 5 the next two days. The team that does the most laps over three days will win. In our multi-occupant class, they're balancing a number of factors. much charging they do from the wall at night and those come together into a formula to determine uh, the winner. Two separate winners, winner in the single occupant class and then also a winner in the event from the multi occupant class. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So we will have two first place winners from this event. So there's essentially two races happening at the same time on the track right now. Wonderful. And it's a beautiful day in Bowling Green for solar so I imagine a lot of the teams are working on keeping the solar panels cool, right, for efficiency? Yeah, so solar panels, um, the efficiency of the solar panel depends directly on the temperature. So you may see teams coming into the pit during the day and spraying the car down with water to cool off the solar panels. They'll also open up the car and fan things out. The battery gets hot as well. Um, so thermal management is very important and when the event is warm and sunny like this. Right, and what's it like being inside the, the cockpit of one of these cars, you know, over 90 degree sun? Yeah, so when I competed, I was a driver for my team, and uh, it, is, it is quite warm. Um, you're often sitting in a puddle of your own sweat by the time you get out, <laughs> but it, it gets very warm, um, and it's very important for these teams to monitor the status of their drivers, make sure they have enough water, um, and and don't take spend too long in the car. Right. So we do have a limit of six hours per day for a driver and four hours continuous. If the heat index gets high enough, we do reserve the right to lower that limit. So teams have to do more often, more frequent driver swaps. Mm -hmm. 